First of all, on behalf of the Chinese University of Hong Kong, may I offer a very warm welcome to this San Hong Kai Property Nobel Laureate Distinguished Lecture 2013, which marks the golden jubilee of the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Today, it's particularly auspicious and meaningful for us as this is the university's foundation day, exactly 50 years ago on this very day, the Chinese university was born. We were established uh, on this very day and therefore it is a very special occasion and we have a Nobel laureate which is about 50 years old to talk to us. <laughs> I would like to sincerely thank San Hong Kai Property for its unreserved support to the Nobel Laureate Distinguished Lecture Series, which was inaugurated in 2004. Today, we have the 20th installment of the lecture series. Some 24 Nobel laureates have delivered their lectures. My gratitude goes to Mr. Patrick Chan from the Shanghong Kai Properties, who is in the audience today. Please give a big round of applause. There are a few things in this lecture which I think are probably uh, uh, relevant to the fact that it's the 50th anniversary of the Chinese University of Hong Kong. And I'm very proud to be, have been invited on this uh, special occasion. And uh, Joseph, I expect to come back in another 50 years at the 100th anniversary of Hong Kong when you and I can do another show together. It should be a lot of fun. So Helicobacter pylori, modern uses for an ancient bacterium. So it's a combination of uh, the history of the discovery of Helicobacter, which has some important lessons for us all. And then uh, a few uh, at the end, it's late in the afternoon, I don't want to be too technical, and some uh, general audience. So we can talk about some of the exciting new developments, uh, very interesting parts of uh, the Helicobacter research, so that uh, even if we don't see any patients with ulcers anymore, we can still keep playing with the Helicobacter and writing research papers. Here's a, a picture of 1982 when Dr. Warren and I first cultured the bacteria. And this is probably our first patient, a lady with the duodenal ulcer, one of the first ones that we treated with uh, amoxicillin. So here's Helicobacter pylori. And uh, remember, it's kind of like a helicopter, if you like. So if patients say to me, that I, got, I want to see if I've got the heli helicopter bacteria, I say, well, I know what you're talking about. Um, so the reason it has that name is it comes from the Greek helico, which means a spiral or twisted thing. Uh, so helico means twisted like a corkscrew. Uh, you see it has about seven flagella on one end to make sure it could swim backwards and forwards. Um, and it's also called pylori, which means it was first found near the pylorus. And pylorus is a Greek word for gatekeeper or you know, guard of the gate. Uh, and that's the pylorus, pyloric sphincter at the bottom of the stomach. It just stops all the food from dropping straight out. So let's ask this question. Why is there so much resistance to new ideas in medicine and science, particularly something easy, bacteria causing ulcers? It doesn't seem very complicated, does it? And that was really uh, figured out by this guy, Daniel Borston, who was the librarian for the US Congress in the, in the 70s and the 80s. He wrote, wrote, had lots of really good quotes, and here's one. The greatest obstacle to knowledge is not ignorance, it's the illusion of knowledge. So if the community doesn't even know that they don't know, that's the illusion of knowledge. Every doctor thought that he knew the cause of ulcers was stress. It had been taught in the medical books for 100 years, even before that. So when someone comes along and says, hey, we've discovered the new cause for ulcers, of course the doctors are there like, well, we don't need another cause for ulcers. We've got plenty of causes, we've got treatments, and we're all making a living out of the ulcer business, which I'll talk about in a second. So that was the illusion of knowledge. Now, it may be sad, but it's true that of all the stuff that's in the medical books right now, half of it is wrong. So that's the illusion of knowledge again. The, the even worse is that we don't know which half that is. That's for the young people to discover. So keep your eyes open and, and look for evidence base in everything that you are told. So just remember that universities, curiosity-driven research, that's where the discoveries come from and that's where the Nobel Prizes come from. So let's go back to then and ask this question. Well, we published a paper then about 13 patients and would the world accept the new cause for ulcers on the basis of data from only 13 patients? 
no way. It's not going to happen. So, of course, we had to do a lot more work then. And people who make discoveries, if you do some interesting research, you've got to fight for it. And don't expect anybody to help you because you're going to have no friends. They are going to try and prove that you are wrong. So you have, but you have to be brave. You have to be able to you know, fight for it. And that takes a few years, sadly, at a time in your life when you've probably got no money. And so Dr Warren and I, we submitted our paper uh, about this to uh, a conference. They, and they wrote me back this letter, the Gastroenterology Conference in Australia. Dr Marshall, we regret your research paper was not accepted for presentation. The number of abstracts we received continues to increase. For this meeting, 67 were submitted and we could only accept 56. <laughs> so your paper, Dr Marshall, was one of the worst ones. So, of course, we're pretty, uh, pretty sad about that. However, there is a Chinese proverb about this. Washing chung down. <laughs> and uh, so people ask, why did it take more than 20 years to win the Nobel Prize? And you know I told you about Robert Koch, who discovered tuberculosis. Well, that's, this is relevant here. And here it is. Uh, this could be a coincidence, but it doesn't seem like it. So in 1882... He cultured the tubercle bacilli, which is TB. In 1884, he did the experiments and said Cox postulates, you know, that's how you prove that a bacteria uh, is harmful by doing this uh, drinking the, bag, the bugs type of experiment. And they awarded him the Nobel Prize in 1905. And we noticed that it was exactly 100 years later that we cultured Helicobacter pylori <laughs> for the first time. So, wow, that was a coincidence, wasn't it? And... 1984, exactly 100 years after he published that paper, I fulfilled Cox postulates for H. pylori by drinking the bacteria. I actually like, did his experiment, but I didn't know that it was 100 years. And so we think probably the Nobel Committee, they said, well, let's wait until it's Robert Cox's 100th anniversary and we'll give it to Dr. Marshall and Warren. They're so poor, uh, we'll give it to them after, in 2005. And so maybe that's why it took so long to get the Nobel Prize. But of course, we've had a lot of fun since then. Thanks very much. Thank